Things whatsoever I have commanded you. Y'all know I love this. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm going to talk about? And lo. When I was talking, I was explaining to you the observation of all things. It don't make no difference whether you wear glasses or don't wear glasses. When you have connected with Jesus Christ, He will give you spiritual eyesight and enable you to see stuff done before it comes. But now, if you're being ugly, backbiting, constantly, sinning all over the universe, your spiritual discernment won't work. Cause he cannot dwell in an unclean temple. Now, for anybody to around, look to the left or the right or straight ahead, don't be looking at me. All of us sometimes have an unclean temple. But how many of you, Lord, clap your hands and say, Lord, I'm so glad that morning by morning you give me some new mercies. He understands that as you watch the news, we become angry, Michelle. Who does said we couldn't get angry, did he, Pastor? He said, but don't sin when you get angry. Well, now, I, somebody asked me the other day, what do you mean I'm angry? What do you mean don't sin when you get angry? In other words, don't be trying to make vengeance yours because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I will repay. And then, what, sir, what, 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 why do we want to do this? We just stopped doing something five minutes ago. Cussing on your breath. Some of y'all cuss out loud. And God is still working on all of us. Now let me tell you something. Just because you don't cuss, what do you do? All of us doing something. But if you look down the road, Sometimes people look that way, brother Tom. But how many of y'all out there to just turn around and look how far we have brought us from? It's easy, Tracy, for us to say what somebody else ain't doing. It is so easy for us to say, we've been sitting in church all these years. All of us. Because ain't nobody sitting in here today perfect. I need somebody to wave their hand at me and say, I'm striving to reach my perfection. And how many of y'all are pastors feeling? It is a struggle sometimes to do what God wants you to do. Because Paul said, I find in a law that when I could do good, evil is ever present with me. I'm going to tell you right there, Shirley, sometimes that evil one ain't nobody else but me. No, 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 wait a minute. If God withdraws his hands from us, if he backs up off of us, if his anointing is removed from us, ain't nobody in here have the ability to talk about what they have done right. Within us, evil exists. But I'm so glad uh, he put his hands on my hands. And he pressed down and he shook my head and said, Let this man be in you. Which was all so incorrect. Now, wait a minute, you can't know nothing about his mind to show if you don't read his word. Because it I'm going to stand here this way right here. Yeah. Okay. You stand right there. You're going to be like Harpo in the color purple. You're going to rain on your head. His word can be dropped down. But how many of y'all know it's better when it's dispensed to a test 
testimony is better when it's dispensed from somebody who has been anointed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's better when it's dispensed. And it's also better, Pastor Spirit, once you dispense it, that it is received and said, it is well with my soul. Amen. But it can't get well with your soul if you don't want to do what God tell you to do now. You can't say, now, the Lord, now wait a minute. I'll do that, but I ain't doing that. Do you know the thing that you don't want to do? That's what he wants you to do the most. And, and, and I found out, Shirley, the thing that I don't want to do, that's what he keeps telling me to do the most. And I'll be saying, sometimes I want to get smart and say, you know how to do y'all want to do this. <laughs> and I have done that in the past. Got smart with the Lord and got smacked down on the ground. But as you live, and you, and you see that he has been my rescuer, he has been the one that has come and got me. When I was in the midst of about to falling down in a pit, and I found out that he wasn't going to let me fall by myself. Yeah. Have you ever stopped falling and you found yourself all of a sudden springing up like you was on a trampoline? And you looked around and you said, I don't know how I got here. But then your mama mind come to you and you say, nobody but Jesus. Nobody but the Lord who holds me up. <laughs> Teaching them to observe. Don't go tell no lies on the Lord. Because under the shadow of love, what is it, Pastor Spirit? Love hides a multitude of faults. If you dispense love, it will cover all kinds of stuff. Sometimes when you dispense love, you're not dispensing love in the Aaron attitude where you want some affection from somebody, but you are dispensing love in the agape mindset where you say, I might not like you, but I got to love you. I know y'all sit up here want to play like y'all all sanctified, y'all like everybody. No, you don't. And then you have to understand, Philon is a love of family. Some of us have a hard time with that. He my cousin, but I can't stand him. He shame us. You just quit shaming us. I just quit shaming us. How are we going to talk about one another? You know who we are? Yeah, here's where we miss out on our commission. He has instructed us to observe all things. And as you observe all things, you need to go all the way back to Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Sing. The Lord, why he may be found. Call him on him while he's still yet near. And what I need to do that for? Because if he don't tell me what to say, I might say the wrong thing. If, if he don't tell me how to act, I might act a fool, dog. If he don't give, give me the anointing, I, I might not tell the world that I found a savior and I know he's with him. He don't talk to me and give me the word. He said, let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yeah, I know we love one another, but guess what? I can't redeem Tracy. I can't redeem Charlie. I can't redeem Mother Jones. But I can dispense the gospel of Jesus Christ that will let them know he is the redeemer. And you know sometimes, now we just tell the truth. We know if he left the redeemer up to us, we pick and choose who we will redeem. They don't like the way I look. I ain't redeeming you. <laughs> I don't like your sin. I ain't redeeming you till next foot. But his grace is sufficient. And guess what I found out, David? Not only is it sufficient, it's able to keep me. Anybody in here ever did like I see, I don't know. Sometimes, that's why I went back to these little small towns. Because when I had that big towns, I'd be tempted to throw me. Oh, y'all looking to be like your underwear one two hundred pounds? In your home? On your job? Just go to the grocery store, spread it down. Oh, this chaos. But how many of y'all know Jesus is the chaos killer? Yes. And nobody can handle chaos until we heal. Now this is even with chaos comes in the house of the Lord. He can handle chaos in his own house. And what he'll do is he'll muzzle 
the mouths of the murderers. And I wonder sometimes, now that I stop murmuring, <laughs> what y'all murmuring about? You know, you hear what I say, now that I stop doing Because there's nothing that you can talk about somebody else doing that nine out of ten of them ain't hitting you. All of us have fallen short of the glory of the Lord, and the Lord has been gracious to us and picks us up over and over again. Thank you. Thank you. While he's teaching us to observe all things, he is ministering to us as individuals before we go out into the hedges and highways and compel somebody else to come. Here I go. Simon. Simon, Satan has a desire to set you as wheat. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. They saw this back in the day. Get right with God and do it now. You know what happened to say when he read it? Saying get right with God, we went right. But you know what? You know what I found out? I might not be right, but his grace, his mercy, and his compassion constantly covers me, even when I'm walking in fall. I'm preaching it ain't right, but he still let me preach. I'm saying it ain't right, but he still let me say. I'm trying to tell you a little, but I ain't love, but he still let me love. Yeah. So what you got to understand? Sometimes when he tell you to speak, he's speaking to you first, yeah. because you can't help nobody if you can't testify about how he helped you. Right. And ain't nobody sitting in here today who have not been helped by the hand of the master. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he How do y'all, don't y'all know when you hear the Lord tell you his own help? Don't that make you feel good when the Lord tells you you're his own? You know, every now and then, I have to go back through my phone and look at some pictures.
but it was no unity. Everybody doing their own thing, Mother Joan. Had 20 bosses in the church. But the Lord said, just preach. And I found out, Pastor Spillman, looking back, he didn't want me to preach those shouting sermons, but to instruct and teach unity and love in the Word of God. And I stood up in August 2008, and the Lord gave me that slogan right there, where salvation is the focus, and love is the foundation. And then he started moving things up. And then, watch this. Here comes Satan. That's what we said. That's what we said. Here comes Satan. That's what we said. But I read a scripture in the Bible down where he said, he's going to let the wheat and the tear grow together. And then when he's like, it's time, he'll start separating. See, I ain't got no green thumb like Shirley, but the Lord got a Holy Ghost green thumb. He know how to pull the right wheat out and make things what he wanted to be. I didn't know how to pull it out. I was trying to get along with everybody. But I found out Oh, I've been through. 
when all I watch him do for other folks. When I watch him take an 80-something-year-old woman and have knee surgery. And she's so spunky and trusting in God enough to give me go third. I watched Pastor Spielman up here trying to help me and our niece out one day. We were somewhere and had all this stuff coming from UPS. And we asked him to come up here and put it inside because folks were stealing stuff. And just what happened, he didn't come and we kept waiting and he kept waiting. I said, go home. He was home five minutes and looked around, house on fire. That ain't nothing but God. Because you know what if he would have stayed up here waiting, yes, yes, yes. by the time he heard, it could have been worse than it was. Amen. But you know what I know? God will take tragedy. And he'll make triumph come out of tragedy.
He could read me and what I was going through and he wasn't nowhere near me. Can't nobody replace Ray. Mm -mm. 50 years. Genuine brush. But you know what God said to me? You got videotapes. You got pictures. You got great memories. And one thing you can do, feed on those things to keep yourself strong. I don't preach, oh God, probably over a hundred some of funerals. Ray's was the toughest ever for me to do. When my son died, I told my daughter, I'm going to do the funeral. She said, no, you ain't. And she was right. Because when I got there and I had to look down, Jesus. I ain't had nothing. I fell at the castle. Strange preachers who had never met me had to pick me up and take me to a seat. My brother right here was with me when I got the call. He saw life leave out of me. You know what, Tracy? I hear God telling me I have been preparing you to be able to stand and comfort folks while you need to comfort yourself. Yes, I do not stand. Oh, you know me, God, I've been preaching all these years. Mama, you know, Kathy, Mama said it would be days like this. The older you get, the more frequent. Death is going to knock at your door. Yeah. And so it behooves all of us. Let's value our time together. Amen. Because we don't know who's next. Yeah. But whatever. We got Dee sick. Cassandra sick. Very sick. But we still got God. And we still have Jesus. And his stripes still heal. It is not up to us to compare when we should go and somebody else should go. But to make sure when they call our number, we've done what he told us to do. And I'm going to tell you something. We are, it's this. It's easy to look at somebody and say what they ain't doing. But in the midnight hour, you don't know their relationship with God. Amen. You don't know, you, you, just because they ain't hollering and screaming like you, you don't know nobody's relationship with God. Everybody ain't like you. Everybody don't make a lot of noise. Everybody don't clap. Everybody don't shout. Everybody don't dance. Everybody don't speak in tongues. But you don't know what they do with their midnight cries. Tracy is tall. And our niece, we have Kathy and Tim. Uh, Michelle, too. I sure enough have changed as a preacher. Oh, yes, I have. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. If he didn't give me counsel in 2008, I can't promise you I'd have been as strong as I was in 2018. Uh -uh. But he had brought me through some stuff. See, because when I come here from Texas, that's all I'm going to say. Michelle, I ain't going to tell you a lie. Kathy told me to get my butt home. She didn't say butt. <laughs> you know, she said, you got two days while I'm coming to get you. When your sister can feel you slipping away and you're 1,300 miles away and she can feel you slipping away and she said, get your butt home. And I got to make Have anybody ever put a cracker in their hand and crumbled it up? That's the way I was. Yes, Donald been my sister since 72. Long time. Let me tell you something. She's detective of me, too. Yeah. Donald saw me. She grabbed me. She said, 
Uh oh, we're not going to do this. Stick that out of your walk with her because she's hard. You know, no, we're not going to do this. You're going to cut that out. You're going to cut that out. You're going to cut that out. And I went in my mom's house. I went in that little bedroom and I crawled over that bed and I didn't want to come out. Kathy called me. She said, look outside. I left Texas it was 85 degrees. The next day, it was six inches of snow. And guess what? I didn't even have a coat. I ain't gonna go out there no way. But as I'm observing, one day I'm here. The next day I'm here. Y'all stay with me, I'm coming. But while I was here and here, God said, I'm here. But y'all, I heard this scripture as a little child. And it did not resonate with me because I didn't know what they was talking about. But when the storms of life were raging, and the billows were tossing high. I found that that low had a strong connotation to it. It meant that in my distress, Lord have mercy, I found out that Jesus was kind to aid me. And I heard that old saint say, because he ever loved me and he came but my problem was I wasn't telling Jesus all about my struggles. I was keeping them to myself. Because I had a mindset that thought that my money would make everything alright. But then I looked around, I ain't had no money. I ain't had nothing. But what mama put in me as a little boy. The train of a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. See, God, I was in church all my life, but I didn't know I had already strayed far away from God, even while I was singing and preaching. But Jones, I wasn't nowhere near God, because I was all wrapped up in myself. You sure enough can't sing. You know how to preach. Man, you educated. Oh, that Bishop Mary got money. But I needed more than all of that stuff. And I picked up the word of God.